Hi, I'm Tony Scott. I'm Director of Corporate Development for Contigo International. Now, Contigo operates all over the world, and we get a lot of requests for lunch and learn presentations. And unfortunately, there's just not enough of us to accommodate all of those requests. So we came up with the idea for a virtual lunch and learn, which is what we're doing right now. It's everything you would get in our normal lunch and learn presentation, except for the ability to ask questions and hear the answers. And of course, we're missing the sandwich and the iced tea. But in any event, we're going to give you a lot of information. Uh, it'll tell you a great story. And it'll show you some ways that Contigo is a very, very powerful resource for all of your design options. You have to meet fire code, but why not do it using a product that is thinner, prettier, lighter, that meets any green building requirements that you have and costs less. We say that fire is the problem and we say that new fire resistance technology from Contigo is the answer. Now fire barrier technology, as you know, has been around for quite a while, 40, 50 years. But products that have existed thus far have been thick and lumpy. They've been very difficult to apply. They've been messy. They've been toxic. They've been carcinogenic. High VOC contents. More often than not, they require very specially trained applicators. They require special equipment. There are scheduling difficulties because of all of that. The choreography of doing a project is very demanding and fireproofing has added another level of complexity to it until now. It's expensive, it's heavy, it overloads the steel, it falls off. I'm gonna show you some examples later where fireproofing technologies from years past actually destroys the steel on the project where it's applied and it can't be shop applied. If it were applied at a shop, by the time it got transported to the job site, it would all be on the ground. Here's an example of the old type technology on the left, and you can hardly see it, but the example on the right, right here, is the same level of fire protection that's afforded with Contigo International's thin film passive fire barrier latex. That's a huge difference. And it's not just that it's a lot thicker. The old stuff is, as we mentioned before, toxic. The new generation of products from Contigo are the exact opposite of everything you've ever thought you knew about fireproofing technology. Another problem with older technology is that they're really not that effective. This is a shot of McCormick Place in Chicago in 1967 after a devastating fire that destroyed McCormick Center. It didn't have to be destroyed, it could have been saved, but the steel uh, structural members were heated to the point that the entire roof system collapsed in. And that, of course, is the problem with fireproofing steel. Fire is also very unforgiving. This is a shot of the Wicks Warehouse fire in April of 2013. 60 firefighters worked on that nonstop. Once the fire had taken off, it was out of control. A statistic is that fire doubles every 60 seconds. If you can arrest it in the very early stages of it progressing, it makes such an important difference. And of course, everybody remembers the World Trade Center. The steel that collapsed on the upper floors brought down the entire structure. Could have been resolved potentially, although it was a very intense fire fueled by JP-8. And, of course, we all so remember the, the fire in the Gulf of Mexico at the Deep Horizon drilling platform where an entire rig was lost and 11 men lost their lives. Part of the problem with that Gulf fire, by the way, is that the kinds of products that have been used historically can be very destructive. This story about BP filing suit against a leading intumescent manufacturer, a fireproofing manufacturer, shows that once they dredged up the steel from a mile under the ocean surface, they found that the steel was largely dissolved. Um, much of the strength had been lost. Could anything have saved the Deep Horizon platform that day? I doubt it. But it did bring up the point that technology from the past can actually be destructive long term. And what are the odds you're going to have a fire? Slim? 
what are the odds that the steel can be damaged? Very high, we're finding out. Here's an example of steel that was uh, protected with uh, an older genre of technology. And you can see that it starts to leak out. This is freshly applied. This is within 24 hours. Within 72 hours, we start seeing cracks and fissures and we see opening and inside this one section right here, you see that it's already started to rust. This is yet another project where it's, the product has been freshly applied. Rust has already started under the surface. And the thing about rust is that once it starts, it doesn't stop. Now also notice sections here where if anything touches this stuff, it falls off. And then you come back in and you do repair jobs. After 30 days, we get deep, hard black rust in this one example. Even within two weeks, repair jobs have been uh, called out and the rust continues to develop. This has been going on for a little longer, but we have a cavitation here between the steel and the fireproofing. And in there, rust is very deep, very profound. Here, the rust has turned into that black, bubbly, orange stuff that is very aggressive. Now this is a problem because a long time ago when we built structures, they were actually overbuilt. And that's why at the end of World War II, when a B-29 Mitchell bomber slammed into the Empire State Building, nothing of substance happened. The steel was very, very heavy, far heavier than it needed to be. The way buildings are built today, though, we're able to engineer steel to a micron, practically. Now, that's great in terms of making a lighter structure, and it's great in terms of saving money. However, if you now take away 5, 10, 15, 20 percent of the steel that was built or used to build a structure, it's no longer sustainable. In some cases, we've run into projects that if a structural forensic analysis were to be conducted on those buildings today, it's unlikely that they would pass. This is a great example of that. This is from the new convention center in San Juan, Puerto Rico. This rust is very aggressive and as you can see, it's eaten away a fair amount of the steel. This is pervasive throughout the building. As this initiates rust, as you get this surface destruction of the steel, the adhesion here is lost. And most of these products call for application without primer. So the idea of using a rust inhibiting primer doesn't, doesn't work. Once that lets go, all of this falls off. Forensically, as you know, they found that most of the fireproofing that was on the World Trade Center was no longer there when they examined the steel. This is another example from a parking garage. This dark caramel color discoloration that's on the steel that you see tells me that there's rust. I remember going to a hospital project once where Contigo was being used on all the steel that was exposed to the public, the pretty stuff. But the pan decking all of the other steel was treated with something like this and that sort of coffee colored discoloration was pervasive throughout the project. And I made the point that that's rust. Unfortunately, it was in the pan decking on the roof in a five, six story structure. That's a problem. Now Contigo, by contrast, is very thin. And as you can see by this example that's getting ready to be tested at Intertech Laboratories in Elmendorf, Texas. It's also very, very uh, aesthetic. It's a beautiful coating, but it is very, very effective. This is a coating adequate to make this W12 by 96 go three hours restrained. All of this is important because fire is a problem. And it seems like it's more of a problem in spite of improvements in code because we have a lot more people. When I was a kid, there were three billion people in the world and today there's over seven. Same amount of land, but a lot more people. High density is a big issue. And while fires statistically have been on the decline for probably 10 or 15 years, fires in high density structures such as apartments, um, high-density office, condo space, mixed-use, 
uh, school dormitories, hotels, um, are on the increase. And you know, they're a lot more devastating now, and there's a reason for that. It used to be, before the age of cramming a lot of people together, that taller structures were more the exception and not the rule. And now taller structures are more the rule and not the exception. You have to have efficient use of land. So now we have people that are stacked up on top of each other, below each other, to the left, to the right, to the north, to the south. A lot of people packed together. So not only do you have the damage to the structure that actually catches on fire, but a tremendous amount of collateral damage with all of the surrounding offices, condominiums, apartments, or dormitory rooms. And that's where Intumescent is extremely helpful. So here's what we've come up with in terms of new technology and breakthroughs in polymer and uh, polymer technology and designs of Intumescent. We now have technology that is not just thin film, it's super thin film technology. It offers greater protection at the same time. A very easy surface prep. Applying Contigo only requires an SP3 prep, so it's very simple. Easy application. It's top coatable for perfect aesthetics. You could take a piece of steel, and we'll take a look at some later. You could take a piece of steel, protect it with Contigo, so thin that you're not even going to really be aware that that steel has been fireproofed, and then top coat it with a coating that gives you exactly the finish that you're looking for. For example, the industrial look is very popular. Apply Contigo onto raw steel, expose it, then apply a metallic pewter gloss, for example. Make it look like raw steel. Even go back on and airbrush on umber glaze highlights, for example, to make it look like patinaed steel. You can get very, very creative with this. So you're able to meet fire code, but at the same time, you're able to exercise far more creative options than you ever could before. The great thing about top coating, by the way, is that you would intuitively think that top coating would either reduce or eliminate our fire protective qualities. Our test data shows that's not the case. In fact, top coating actually adds about 25% to our fire resistance. Contigo is very, very affordable compared to other products. If another product needs 90 mils, maybe we need 30 mils. And we'll take a look at some comparisons in just a few more slides. The product is water-based for easy cleanup, Unmatched latency. This is a topic that doesn't get discussed, but a lot of fireproofing technologies from the past only have a limited period of efficacy. You apply it, and then in perhaps one or two or five years, it's no longer effective. Technically, you would need to reapply it. Contigo has unmatched latency, and that's very important. We use, in fact, six different entities to run spectrofluoroscopic IR scans on our product to make sure it's consistent, not just today or last month, but going back 12 years. There are no toxins, no VOCs, no carcinogens, no mutagens. The product is tested not only in the can or when applied onto a wall, but it's also tested in burn conditions using a cone colorimeter. No foul smelling formula in this one. That pungent battery acid smell is gone now and it can be shop applied. It means it's your steel fabricator can apply Contigo fire barrier latex onto the steel for your project, top coat it, and deliver it to the job site for installation. And that's what the difference looks like. On the right hand side you see prime steel, on the left hand side you see Contigo and this is light steel. Nonetheless this is for a two hour application and it's almost imperceptible that the product has been applied. This is what I was talking about earlier. We were asked to do an, an analysis between three different brands of intumescent fire barrier latex that are seemingly a lot like Contigo, except for the amount of product that's needed. The first thing we examined was the W1049, and we simply used the data that was on everybody's website, including ours. To protect for two hours, brand A needed 310 mils. Brand B said it wasn't possible using UL Design X641. And brand C needed 113 mils. 
Brand C is the newest, latest, greatest from another intumescent manufacturer. Still, Contigo only needs 77 mils. On an HSS 8 by 8 by half, Brand A needed 334 mils. Brand B needed 186 mils. Brand C needed 93 mils. And Contigo only needed 42 mils. So it's not just about saving money on the cost of product because you're going to need less product to be applied for whatever rating you need, but it's also a function of weight. The more weight you put on the steel, the more loading you have. The more loading you have, the heavier the steel needs to be. That's not always possible. Sometimes the project is designed or you're going in on a project that was designed a long time ago. Contigo is lighter, thinner, and as we've discussed a couple of times, really opens up your design options. Here's how Contigo tests products. Contigo is unique in that when we conduct a steel test, we use these six standards for the US market. We use ASTM E119, which is the basis of all building code, but then we also test to UL263, ULCS101 for the Canadian market, NFPA251, ANSI A2.1, and UBC7.3. Not only does not everybody do that, I'm not aware of anybody that does that except for Contigo. Every lab that we use, however, is an ILAC certified testing laboratory. On the top left picture, you see that we're preparing full-scale beams or columns. We put it into a standard blast furnace. That's the kind of testing that we do. On the bottom left, we see what it looks like when we're done. The Contigo product holds on, maintains the entire envelope around the steel all with a super thin coat. And this shows other tests that we do, like uh, an NFPA 286 room burn, uh, and this is a UBC 262 thermal burn. This is an important feature of Contigo. Typically with intumescence, the weak spot has been that the intumescent expands in many different directions. However, it can't round the corner when it comes to a flange like demonstrated here. With the Contigo product though, it expands several inches, it creates layer after layer, and it all follows the entire contour of the steel. Critically important to get a long rating on steel. We do other applications too. For example, this demonstrates some data on aluminum. And this is just showing the furnace temperature uh, in the fire testing furnace and the thermocouples on a piece of untreated steel, which was destroyed after 18 minutes. It just simply liquefied. This is with it using a quarter million BTUs. However, with the Contigo product, the furnace temperature went to its maximum temperature. The Contigo product leveled out at 18 minutes and stayed flat for the balance of the time, over two hours. After about two hours and 20 minutes, we decided to stop burning propane. Uh, obviously, though, it would have gone on for a very, very long time. This is kind of an interesting thing we've been studying of late. Drywall. Is it a fire barrier or is it a fuel load? And we've always held out that the gypsum wallboard is in fact a fire barrier, which it is, but not initially. In the beginning, wallboard is a big fuel load, and I'll tell you why. We looked at, a, at an example of a house burn like this, and we found that the house was, e or the burn was even more aggressive than here. It had traveled through the entire house. And here's why. When there was a flash fire in the kitchen and a fireball that came from that, it flashed the drywall in the formal dining room and then in the foyer and then in the other rooms on the first floor and then it went up the stairs and into the second floor. Huge house. And what that fire had for fuel was an incredible amount of square footage of what? Paper and rubber, latex paint on it. So before the gypsum board ever became a fire barrier, it was a fuel load. And it's a problem that happens in firefighting every day. Now this is a pretty big fire that you may remember. This was in Santana Row. Uh, Santana Row was a, was a project in San Jose, California. And in 2002, about $70 million worth of lumber was completely incinerated. A fire started on the windward side of the structure while it was still in framing stage. 
the fire marched through very quickly, very aggressively, very destructively, and very expensively. Take a look at some of the projects that we do. Uh, this is a project that we're, we're proud of. It's the entire Saudi rail system, north, south, east, west. The entire kingdom of Saudi Arabia uses Contigo throughout their project. This is an example of what the steel looked like in the beginning. And the issue they had to deal with is how are we going to protect that? That's, it's an unusual shape. It's, the steel is huge. Uh, and there's a lot of it. And it, it's traveling thousands and thousands of kilometers. This section had already been constructed when they discovered Contigo. And they found that they could apply it before they erected it. And this is an example of a structure that was built that, uh, that is portable. This can actually be disassembled and moved. So they'll place, one of, they'll place several of these structures and then paint some of the big pieces of steel in it and then move it along rails to where it's going to be installed. And then after a period of time, they move the structures down the track, reassemble it, start painting more pieces of steel that are, say, to the south, and to the north, and then disassemble the building and move it again. A very effective way of painting all this steel. And look at how thin and pretty that is. You're able to actually use a tighter fan. You're able to spray it with commonly available spray equipment. So it's a very efficient coating to apply to. Here's another example of steel that's been prepared and uh, treated with Contigo. This is for, this is for a two hour rating on a W, I think that's probably a W18. Um, again, you can see it's very thin, it's very pretty, it's very smooth. If you didn't know that steel was fireproofed, you would not know that steel was fireproofed. Now this is top coated with color. Give you an idea of what you can do with color. There's more texture actually to the top coat than there is to the Contigo product below. And this is a set, an example where they went back through and decided, no, nah, if we can paint this with something that makes it look like steel or aluminum, Let's do that. So they went back to this silver color. Contigo has some advantages with projects like this, with the USDA quarantine facility at Miami International Airport. We had a couple of challenges on this project. One is we wanted a thin, aesthetic, beautiful solution to fireproofing. As you can see, there's a lot of exposed structure in there. Uh, to match that architecture, we needed something really, really nice. But here's the other thing, that's a quarantine facility. We can't introduce anything into the quarantine facility. We can't, we can't have any off-gassing of the material. We can't leach out any formaldehyde uh, resin. We can't have those little fibrils uh, falling off and drifting through the entire breathable air in there. So that's why Contigo was a great choice for this project. This is another kind of example where Contigo saved the day. This is a development where we had 1,200 apartments and condos, and you can't see it, but there's shopping and parking and some other things on the other side. The problem was the ceilings were done in 5 8 X rock, which is what you'd normally do. However, code had changed. Well, the drywall contractor, not keeping up with the code, was surprised when the code officials came in and said, we have a problem. You should have used type C, and you used 5 8 X. He said, that's what we always use. And he said, well, not anymore, our code changed. So the, uh, so the fire official said, the only choice you have is to take that down and put up what you should have put up, which is type C. Even though it wouldn't be a perfect solution. But the contractor said, that's not possible. These units are finished. They have crown molding in them. Uh, they, have, um, uh, they have wall coverings. Uh, appliances have been installed. They've been carpeted. These are ready to go. Um, Code officials said, doesn't matter. I'm not giving you a certificate of occupancy because they don't meet me code. They said an alternative would be that they could put up a single layer of half inch regular rock, but then they'd have to retexture and paint. And that was basically the same problem they would have had if they had to reinstall all of the, all of the original drywall. The solution we came up with was clever. Our testing shows that Contigo adds 55 minutes to any type of drywall. By going to a single thin coat, we added more than the 15 minute difference 
and thus the contractor was able to save $1.2 million in solving this problem. Contigo is used heavily in the Port of Miami, and I'll show you some examples later of what they had at the Port of Miami before and what a difference Contigo makes. This is what they had before. You can see that it started uh, rippling, delaminating, completely unacceptable. We found something interesting, and we're going to have this on a later video. We took samples of this stuff. It actually is now flammable. Not only is it not fireproofing anymore, it is definitely a fuel source. In the same way, just north of Port of Miami, we have Port Everglades. Um, the Port Everglades complex is fabulous, completely modernized, cruise ships, freighters, all kinds of things come into Port Everglades. Um, and we're proud to be a part of it, predominantly in the, in the passenger areas where they need something very, very thin, very pretty, very durable. It's not a looking picture, but it's the British Antarctic Survey, and Contigo protects this. Important that Contigo's on that project. If, you're, if your home burns up there, you've got a cold night ahead of you. But Contigo is reliable in very high temperatures, like the project in the Saudi desert. It's very reliable and, uh, and effective in very, very cold temperatures, negative 80 degrees. This is another example of a save that we did. This is a Hilton Garden Inn in Reno, Nevada. The framer went up four stories and uh, did so with conventional lumber right out of the lumber yard. It was supposed to be pressure treated fire resistant lumber. Well, the uh, code official came by, observed that it was just regular lumber, and said uh, there was no choice except to tear it down and start over again. As you can imagine, a large footprint hotel four stories high. All of that stick lumber, big problem. Uh, we got a call from the general contractor, and we said, well, you know, the solution is simple. You can paint all the wood with Contigo. It won't be that expensive. It'll certainly be a lot less expensive than destroying the structure. And, uh, uh, and you'll get good results. Well, we were asked to document that very thoroughly because it was, a, it was an, a very atypical kind of installation or remedy for a problem. And we did that. And on our website, you'll see the things that we found from the U.S. Department of Agriculture that actually talk about the problems with pressure-treated lumber, and they are several. And here's what we found. We found that regular dimensional lumber plus Contigo, plus the labor to apply it, is actually about 25% less expensive than getting pressure-treated lumber. However, unlike pressure-treated lumber, no carcinogens, no toxins, no health issues for people handling it. It's not a special order product. Here's another thing that we found in those USDA studies, or I guess I should say things the USDA found, and that is, Attachments put through the pressure-treated lumber, unless they're stainless steel, get dissolved. We also found, or they also found, that the lignans in the wood get destroyed. That's the strength of lumber. So you're betting the long-term possibility that maybe you'll have a fire against the absolute inevitability that you'll lose the attachment apparatus that's holding the whole thing together and the structural integrity of the wood. Contigo, a much better solution. And we found that the manufactured wood industry has gotten very attracted to Contigo. Manufactured wood offers some really important solutions to building. Efficient, inexpensive, strong, but the problem is it's a fuel source. In fact, OSB is the kind of material that the fire testing laboratories use to clean out their furnaces because it burns so hot, so aggressively, and it builds up the thermal energy faster than anything else. However, when Contigo is applied, OSB is no longer a threat. It's a great building material, it's safe, it's significantly safer than it would have been without Contigo, and the wood is actually preserved better with Contigo on it. This is a great project that we worked on, the Oceana Hotel and Spa in Half Moon Bay, California, just south of San Francisco. If you haven't stayed there, if you're ever in the San Francisco area, you owe it to yourself to go stay there. It is a fabulous hotel run by wonderful people. 
and safe because the rooms, all through here, the structure, the steel, everything is treated with Contigo. You can't really see it, but on the back side, they have restaurants, they have shopping. It's just a fabulous place to stay, protected with Contigo. Oh, and talk about resorts. This is French Lick, Indiana. Now, back in the 20s, French Lick was the place to go. It was fabulous. But over time, it fell into tremendous disrepair. And recently, has been completely brought back to life. The rooms are fabulous. The common areas are fabulous. The uh, areas like these large atriums that they have are, are just amazing. It's a great place to stay, but being a legacy property like this, being able to go back and protect steel, wood, polyurethane foam, drywall, not possible. Too many things are already in place, but Contigo, because it's light, it's thin, it's easily applied, was able to do the job. Contigo is used a lot on military installations as well. The reason is military installations need passive protection. A military installation could be attacked in any number of ways and you need to know that if a water line is taken out or if other systems are suddenly unavailable under attack, you need something that's going to work regardless. The military has been very attracted to Contigo's long-term latency. It's not the kind of thing that you want to find in 10 years doesn't work anymore. This is a beautiful project that we, where Contigo was applied. And there's a video in our video library that talks about this specific project. This is the Miami-Dade Cultural and Arts Center. Uh, dramatic architecture. So, all of that exposed steel needed to be protected with something very, very thin. And when you look at the video that's in our video library at ContigoInternational.com, you're going to see how much damage was done by the the old style fireproofing that was applied originally. Well, then when they peeled that off, they went to a heavy mastic and you could see how thick, ugly, unacceptable that was. Then they discovered Contigo. And I think you're gonna find that when you use Contigo, it does the same thing for you. Quick overview of our plant. This is plant one that's in Silver Lake, Indiana. Contigo is sold and manufactured all over the world, but this is where it all started. And in the back of the uh, far west room. We have a bay where tanker trucks pull in and can offload the resins that we use. And those are pumped in using all of these lines and valves across the production floor to get to the mills where we, where we actually manufacture the product. Goes to mills like this, the loading is overhead and then the other raw materials are blended in through conveyors on this catwalk and product is manufactured. Finished production goes into an adjacent room where it's stored for different kinds of delivery mechanisms, whether domestic or in some cases international. And this is the bay where ocean going containers are loaded then pushed out onto semis. We can also use the same bay that we use to bring in PVA, resins, other liquids, and load tankers that go out. So the product is available in five gallon buckets. 55 gallon drums, 270 gallon totes, and 4,000 gallon tankers. So as we said in the beginning, fire is the problem, but Contigo is the answer. We look forward to welcoming you to the Contigo family. One thing I can say about Contigo is I have never seen somebody that knows intumescent technology use Contigo once and then ever go back to what they used before. Contigo is, a, is an awesome product, and we like to think that our user base is pretty awesome as well. Give us a call. Visit the website, learn more about Contigo, and I think you'll be very pleased that you did.